Yes, welcome back to the channel. CFC DP here with another video. And this one is what else could it be about? It's about the future of Graham Potter at Chelsea Football Club. The deafening silence from social media, um, uh, from Chelsea's official social media after the match yesterday has really been apparent. Now, in one aspect, you could look at it and say, what is there to say? about this game um arguably chelsea's worst defeat in maybe two or three years um in terms of just a lack of um ability uninspiring everything feel free go ahead you can click on the match review um link should be popping up over there to talk more about the match but bigger picture we're talking about today is are Chelsea's owners too proud to fire Graham Potter? Are they trying to save face after making what could be seen as a mistake of Thomas Tuchel? Now, I don't think that it was a mistake to fire Thomas Tuchel. I really don't. I think that if you look at what the issues were, it didn't fit with their ownership style. And I think that there is a clear um dialogue that needs to happen between manager and recruitment staff and owners and if Tuchel wasn't prepared to do that then that's something that I can totally understand that the ownership would go down that avenue um now have they hired a yes man in Graham Potter which unfortunately could be part of the issue now Potter himself has been very um What's the word I'm looking for? Very, you know, just kind of, well, this is life. This is how things are. And I understand you don't want to put pressure on players. You don't want to put pressure on yourself. The situation is very difficult to get through. And I totally understand that at this point. Um, but there are some real reasons why it is apparent that they hired a yes man. And that can be an issue. Because while we do have a set-up recruitment staff, a director of football, things of that nature, um, at this point, it appears that Potter is just kind of sitting there and not working in conjunction with the ownership and the recruitment staff. Or that message isn't being con you know, talked about really deeply. Because I feel like in terms of formation, in terms of player tactics and things of that nature, it should be a, a full compass level if that's what Bowley went and hired him for is to have broader discussions about how this team's going to play, how the identity is and whatnot. And I understand that this is on the back of, like I said, the worst loss in two to three years, but we just don't have an identity. We go out there and it's a great collection of talent. Don't get me wrong, but they just don't have any rhyme or reason to what they're doing. And an identity is something that takes a while to build. I mean, this is, you know, it, when you had uh, Tuchel here, you had sort of an identity um, of how the team was going to play mentally, uh, tactically, physically. You know, you had some leaders in the locker room like Rudiger um, that had the ability to kind of Jorginho even to all his faults. You had the ability to get those guys in and sort of lay the wood down, be like, "This isn't acceptable. We don't have that anymore." Chopping and changing has led to that, and. A squad rebuild is what needed to be happened and leaders will emerge from themselves. But we need to see because I'm not seeing any progress and I'm not expecting to see a miracle and, and us play great football right away. But we need to see some consistency in form and consistency in ideas and consistency in identity. And you need to start to see that thing start to develop. So I think the question will come down to is, is are Chelsea's owners too proud to fire him after making such a big shtick about hiring him into this long-term deal and that being a project and whatnot. It's a bit of self-reflection that needs to be happened um, with, with the ownership and the um, hiring committee, but it's difficult to say. It's very difficult to say whether or not this is going to be to work out past this season. Um, if he makes it to the end of the season, I think if he makes it to the end of the season, you'll definitely see him get the summer um preseason and you'll definitely see him get the first part of next season however i don't know it just doesn't look good right now and unless that he can rally the troops and they can start to put together some performances then i don't know what to say because it just doesn't seem like it's working 
And there's a lot of people that have been on him on Potter for a while now about, uh, you know, does he have, uh, is this over his head? Is, is this not what he's able to do? And it's possible. It's possible. I, I'm not going to say that it is because I think that he is a good manager. And I think that a lot of people would have hired him if you, if they had a managerial openings, but I, I don't know. I think with all the chaos that's happened around Chelsea the last 18 months, it, it's been draining on a lot of people. It really has. I mean, you know, when the when, when the war with Russia um, happened, um, you know, and we were forced to sell our club, there's it's going from such a high to such a low right away. Um, despite, I think it's good in the long run that we did get Todd Bowley to be our owner, but I, I don't know. It, it's tough to say. Um but I just think it's something to watch out for. You know, how long does this Chelsea silence go on? Are the ownership group um, willing to kind of cut their losses? And, you know, they'll have to pay a pretty hefty fee to, to get him out of his contract. Um, and then it would be, become, you know, then it would be who who's going to take over. Um, I don't know. It's tough because I think that you look at, where they are and if they were to fire him they would have to do it soon because i think you would want to have a couple practice games before that second leg against dortmund with your new manager um so i don't know but is that manager out there also there's hansi flick rumors there's pochettino rumors there's a lot of different things that are happening um so we don't know and are the players willing to handle this that's a whole nother aspect of this you know this will be their third manager in the space of what eight months i mean that's a lot to go through as a player and a lot of these new signings that talked to potter really enjoyed their conversations with him part of the allure obviously is going to chelsea football club so i understand i don't think that they would be like oh man we have to leave because potter left but yeah I, I think that's kind of where where it's at with the uh state of the club at right now um there was some transfer news that kind of came out um it appears that Mason Mount has been in um, direct direct talks um, with Liverpool um, about maybe joining up forces there. Um, pull up the tweet here. Da, 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 da. Um, now, it's from the Times. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily a huge report, but... Mason Mount and Jude Bellingham potentially would go to Liverpool um, together. The representatives have been in direct contact with Liverpool since January and will not be signed in place of Jude Bellingham, with FSG providing enough money to Klopp to bring in both if he wanted. So, I don't know. I, I, how I feel about the Mason Mount saga is sort of, I don't know. I think he's a very good player, and I understand that he, he loves Chelsea and he wants to be here, but... Sometimes I just feel like things just get to a point where you just have to cut ties. Um, and I just think this whole contract thing has gotten the best of him. He doesn't really... I just don't know. Some of the, some of his um, some of his gameplay just kind of worries me a little bit. Are we going to be too crowded when we bring in Kunku in and, and Felix? And it, is Mount sort of jealous of Jao Felix because everybody's so happy about how he's playing? Um, for the most part lately. So I don't know how I feel about Mason Mount. I think that he's a great player and I would love to keep him. Um, but I think perhaps uh, greener pastures, you know, might be on the other side for him if he were to get to move. That would obviously help Chelsea uh, significantly with financial fair play, um, getting a good fee for him. Um, and that would allow us to kind of have a little bit of flexibility to do what we want in the uh, in the summer. I don't know. We'll see. There's a lot of time left um, with the Mason Mount situation. Um, and yeah, like I said, everything is sort of um, at the balance right now. Teams, you know, our social media account from Chelsea does not have anything to put out right now. I wonder if there's discussions going on. It could just be nothing. It could just be them saying, you know what, let's give these guys the weekend to complain because <laughs> uh, we, that we deserve it. It, it hasn't been good. Um, and, and I hope it gets better. And if that's under a new manager, then obviously we'll back this club no matter what. Um, but if it's not, we will go with Potter and hopefully that things can turn around, um, the rest of the season and hopefully with a preseason, some more ideas, um, to become more thorough with his actual squad and not some of these Deadwood players. We'll see. 
we'll see what happens. So I want to thank you again for joining in on this video. Hopefully it'll bring you some more daily content as time permits. Um, but yeah, we will be right here with you through this all like subscribe, turn your notification bell on. So you guys know when I go ahead and post. Also, if you're on TikTok, you can follow me over there at CFCDP starting to build a little community over there. So would love to have you. So we will see you soon and have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you.